The following Na Mele special is presented by Hawaiian Airlines, serving these islands for over 75 years. Only one airline is Hawaiian. We proudly feature Hanaho Magazine on all flights between the islands and our nine mainland destinations. I invited these people to be a part of my story, you know. It's really not about me because it's about them molding me and, and why I am the way that I am, you know. Um, watching those generations that day, you know, um, it was magical. So I was home one day and I had Myra English's album playing, you know, and I loved that. I mean, drinking champagne, you know. And I don't know what, what it was that I loved about it, but I just I had an affinity with it and I connected with it right away. And um, I think I finished my homework that day and my mom, I wasn't expecting my mom for a little while, so I was singing to the top of my lungs to the record. And I heard the front door close, you know, to the apartment and, and my, I was like, oh no. My mom came in, she goes, was that you? I said, oh no, no, it was the record, it was the record. She goes, no, I heard something else. You better tell me. You know, my mom was very strict, and and I, I said, yeah, it was me. And she said, hmm. You know, when I first started singing, as a little boy, um, I was a huge fan of Myra English. Um, she was known as the Champagne Lady. Little did I know that later on in life I would become a friend of hers, and um, I really miss her a lot. And when I sang first with Melvin at the Peacock Room. Uh, this was one of the first songs that I sang because it's off of her first LP called Drinking Champagne, but it's a song written by Lot Kowe called Aloha Kamani. Chips, you get them. Okay. the ladies of Ka'ulumau, they represent a generation of people that I knew and I was fortunate to know 
um, as a young boy, you know, um, and that generation is dying off. Um, and I realized that I wouldn't be the person that I am today had, it not, had I not been surrounded by all those kupuna. Antelina and Uncle Lou had a unique way of corresponding with each other. They communicated with a whistle. And wherever you were and you heard that whistle, you know, either one was there looking for each other. And we remember that whistle. So when she, later on in life, she did my lohi lohi my oi, which was, come, don't hesitate. Can, can, can we do that one, please? My lohi lohi. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's that whistle. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, of a like This is a family show. <laughs> okay. Okay, no We do come from a musical family. Um, my brother, I've always admired as a composer because he's so, you know, sometimes he's really too deep, but, um, but I get it. You know, I've always gotten it because he's my brother and stuff, but I never thought that I was capable of, of writing songs. Um, but what I was very capable of was the language. And that's why I guess I took a different path. My brother expresses himself best in in his original songs you know i express myself best in in, in the in the facet of composing through hawaiian because I, I you know it's just been a part of my life oh 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 guys you know what i would really 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 be res remiss if i didn't do um kabitia omanoa you know because it did win song of the year back in 19 
something, yeah, in the last century. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was the first um, Hawaiian language song to win in a while because prior to that there were songs like Honolulu City Lights and From My Heart, that one song of the year. And um, I taught it to my first graduating class from Halau Noa Vainohia in 2004, and that was their gift from me. And they're the only ones so far that have the right to dance it in the halau. <laughs> so, if you would join us in Kabutia Omanoa. Evolution of Hawaiian music. That's where the genius in Hawaiian music that has become Hawaiian music began. It was in a comfortable setting and um, more of a sharing kind of thing, not so much on the stage, you know, spotlights, this and that. It was just everybody getting together and jamming and, and, and sharing their talents, um, singing songs that they, they wrote themselves and for the first time, their contemporaries hearing it for the first time. You ready, Brother Dwight? Our hearts met How fortunate That all our stars align Unforgettable smiles The twinkle in our eyes Made us realize Eyes. 
ebony skies deepen the heavens are Lovers stroll along as soft breezes blow. Lapping waves caress our feet while we embrace. Waikiki by starlight, our special place. The stars, how they shine. With Venus on the rise, that twinkling sparkle of love in your eyes, a gorgeous moon shines down on our hearts. Waikiki by starlight, we'll never part. One loving sigh These magical moments Only we will share Waikiki by starlight We'll always be there Dancing One loving sigh These magical moments Only we will share Waikiki by starlight We'll always be there Waikiki by starlight Thank you, Namahana. Hey, you know, there's that song, Kipohulu, that a lot of people, you know, and I want to set the record straight, a lot of people associate with me and think that I wrote the song. And um, it was actually written by my dear friend, um, Carl Hoku Rasmussen, before his passing in the 80s. And um, after he passed on, I was reminded um, by his brother, Jeff Rasmussen, who was my guitar player for many years, um, to do the song, and I was the first to record it. He talks about the Charles Lindbergh estate on the island of Maui, and um, just uh, like I said, just to set the record straight, I did not write the song. I was just fortunate enough to be the first one to record it. So I want everybody who knows this to get up and hula, keep a hulu. <laughs> Oh, man. 
I didn't know who he was when he was little Anthony. <laughs> All these, I just found out when they mentioned, somebody mentioned it not too long ago, and I said, oh my goodness, I used to see him perform. He was great. I mean, really, not just cute, you know, little ones are always so cute, but he was great at that time. And to find out that he was little Anthony, um, see, you always find out things. You never know everything. I saw him with, uh, I think it was one of Melvin's show and on different stages, you know, throughout Waikiki. And uh, not knowing who he was, but just enjoying this little boy that's doing a fantastic job. I mean, he's out there all heart and soul. And I mean, he just captured everybody's attention. Pleasantly plump and a heavenly sweet and know oh, them their eyes. Oh, to dance around and around just makes my temperature rise. Unless you and I we're gonna give love a whirl until you see it that way. Oh, behave, who look girl, you got a chip. How about a nice time for chips on still, yeah. You're pleasantly plump and heavenly sweet and oh, then their eyes, the way that you dance around and around, just makes my temperature rise, unless you and I, we're gonna give a love a whirl, until you see it that way, oh, behave, fool a girl. To behave, fool a girl. Come on now, behave, mama, fool a girl. <laughs> I afforded my first ukulele because my mom would drag me to like these adult parties that no kids were at. But because I could sing Hawaiian music, they would pass around the hat, and at the end of the night, all the you know, they were drinking and stuff like that. But, you know, I collected it enough to get my first ukulele. And that's why I went with Mikaela when she was still in that guarded space of, of being a little girl and stuff. Um, at the first opportunity that I had, I, I set it up. I told the audience, I said, you know, Hawaiian style, baby is like this. When they come up, if you appreciate, you come up, you throw money. And it was funny because after that time, she loves doing it now because she has a little pocket in her, you know, she, and she has a, um, for a girl her age, she has a pretty sizable savings account. Baby, can you do a school of her uncle, please? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my niece, Mikaela Minowaka Okeanue Nue Cravalho Myers. How's that on a Hawaiian bracelet, yeah? <laughs> Here we go, babe. When I hear the strains of that sweet alekoki Stealing from a far of guitar peineno And when lili ue makes you sway in the moonlight I know the reason Fly 
Flashing white of clouds and of waves, foaming grass, the many shades of green from the plain to the mountains with all the brightest hues. Wish of rain as it sweeps down the valley. I hear the song of wind as it sighs through the trees. I hear the crash of waves on the rocks and the beaches. I hear the hissing surf. Joyful heart, sing aloha to you. In every note, I'll tell of the spell of my island. For then I know that you'll be in love with them too. Oh, I know that verse again. Baby, you know, when you anticipate a call and you finally get the call, I mean, wow, you all <laughs> rev up. And this is, uh, this is how I feel, you know, that there's somebody on the other end that I would like to talk to. So I get very excited and trying to hold my emotions down. That's what it is. And then the, um, when you say aloha no, Half of it is aloha no, you know. Oh, aloha, however, on the other, tell me more, you know, tell me more. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie Joni. <laughs> join them.
aunties. With me, uh, when I dance with auntie, it, it, it she makes you, the feeling comes out. I mean, you love hula so much. Everything about it, hula, it comes out in from in here, comes out in your shows. And that was so exciting to do that aloha no. To me, as my teacher taught me, you know, if they have the heart and the desire, that's all that's necessary. It doesn't matter what's out here because if they have that heart, all you got to do is pull that out. And despite maybe someone's physical challenges, it'll disappear. But you got to teach them how to pull that stuff out, you know. And again, I mean, that, that's what makes the, the ladies of Ka'ulumau as well as the Alama sisters and, you know, some others that may still be alive of their generation. That's what makes them different from the hula that we have today. He is um, very respectful. Um, and he knows his line, where he can go with us. Because normally, when you speak with a, a younger teacher today, they're very, um, they, try, they try to be very persuasive. In other words, either you do it or not, you know? With, with, with Tony, it was a question, will you? And when there's a question and a young man, a young teacher, why wouldn't we want to do whatever we can for him? He didn't push, he asked, and he asked in gentleness. And, and that touched me. You know, I've always had an affinity to the old Hawaiian music, and one of my favorite songs is that song written by Maddie Lamb and Leigh Collins. And I always associate that song with the Alama sisters because in my youth, I would always see them dance this song. So maybe with the music, it'll inspire them to get up and hula for me, okay? So this is for you, Auntie Pua and Auntie Leilani. Ki aloha. Ah, thank you, Auntie Pua. Makuupoli mai o edu uipo
said, are you gone? <laughs> Thank you. So when my sister and I danced, Ke Aloha, it was like my love for my sister. And it's her love for me. And yet you can have a love for, for it's a female or a male, to, a male and female together. But it was the love that I had for my sister. No matter what, no matter where it is, I would always love my sister. Well, I'm grateful to Tony. Um, he has... My mom and my aunt has all, have always been, um, um, probably by their own doing, they've been very private people. And I'm very grateful to him for including them in his projects because they have so much to offer. My mother, Victoria Kelly Ika Apunihonua E.E. Rodrigues, was born into a musical family. Vehi Vehi Oi was special to Mama because it was one of the duets that she sang with her grandfather, James Kaihi'i Kapo Kalani Ii. And I think that's why he chose it to represent Mama.
And then, you know, of course, it was the opportunity to go to Broadway. Um, and I have to um, thank Neva Ragel mostly for that because she had the confidence and the belief in my voice. Um, I had only at that time been known as a falsetto singer. Uh, they were doing a worldwide casting for uh, Miss Saigon. Of course, they included Hawaii, you know, and I was seen at that. And then I told them I had plans anyway to move to New York because I wanted to pursue a recording contract with a major label. And Vinay Leff at the time, who was the casting director, handed me his card and he said, well, when you get there, give me a call. So when I got there, I did give him a call and, um, you know, the rest is history. This is the moment, this is the day, this is the moment when I know I'm on my way. Every endeavor I have made ever is coming into play, is here and now today. This is the moment, this is the time When the momentum and the moment are in rhyme Give me this moment, this momentous moment I'll gather up my past and make some sense at last this is the moment when all I've done, all of the scheming, dreaming, and screaming become one. This is the day, just see it shine when all I've lived for. come for me to prove to them I made it on my own. This is the moment, my final test. Destiny beckoned, I never reckoned second best. I won't look down, I must not fall. This is the moment. The sweetest moment of them all. This is the moment. Damn all the odds. This day or never, I'll sit forever with the gods. And when I look back, I will recall moment for moment. Was the moment the greatest moment of them all? And I remember years ago, a um, gentleman, a master chanter, um, Kaupena Wong, told me, he said, I'm just amazed at you that you are able to have one foot in the past and one foot in, in the present. And you're able to, to bridge the two together, you know? And uh, at the time that he told me that, I, I didn't really understand what he, now, you know, later, you know, 10, 15 years later, now I understand that. Whew. So after 39 years, still going, um, after meeting incredible people who inspired my life, who continue to inspire my life, uh, the opportunities um, were great, fortunate, and um, wasn't without any speed bumps, though. Uh, I think one of the, you know, New York, Hawaii, Japan, all over the world, I think the thing that um, I learned the most was from a song that was made famous by Nat King Cole uh, called Nature Boy. The song was written by Eden Abes, and uh, it's the last line. The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. So, so Laila, 
ka mea nui i hoa o nei e aloha vale ae aloha ho i mai vale ay aloha ho i mai No 